In a time long ago, way back when America was, well, America, deep in the heart of Texas, in a little town called Waco, a group of teenagers randomly came together, or maybe not so randomly, all to participate in an educational social experiment, high school. Richfield High School. I was one of those geeky teenagers. We were like all teenagers, a ball of confusion filled with hope. It was right in the middle of a time period of social change. The 60s. Our class motto was, we're the greatest of the great. We're the class of 68. Some historians say 1968 remains arguably the most historic year in modern American history. No, they didn't make that up. Upon graduation, my class was stepping out into the chaos of campus unrest, civil rights protests, and Vietnam War headlines. More dramatic than black and white newspaper print, where we've been accustomed to getting our news, television now brought the action from all fronts, LA streets to Vietnam jungles, right into our living rooms. And TVs didn't hang on the wall back then. They were mostly large wooden boxes in family living rooms encasing radiant vacuum tubes. The tubes had to heat up before the picture would appear. Via those glimmering phosphorescent tubes, we had watched the events of President John Kennedy's assassination in downtown Dallas five years earlier. After that, Kennedy's accused assassin, Lee Harvey Oswald, was shot to death by carousel strip club owner Jack Ruby in real time as we gawked in disbelief at the TV tube. The year of our graduation, we watched looting and riots in several inner cities following the assassination of Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. Two months later, Robert Kennedy would be assassinated. Contrasting the tragedy and violence of the leap year of 1968 were positive historical advancements, too, like McDonald's offering a new creation at 49 cents, the first Big Mac. Fortuitously, for those who overly indulge the Big Mac, the first successful heart transplant was performed by Dr. Christian Bernard in Houston that same year. The sky above was the big frontier, being conquered in ways only previously envisioned in sci-fi movies. NASA sent astronauts on Apollo 8 into space, orbiting the moon. Boeing introduced the first 747. Top 40 radio rocked and rolled the 1960s with unquestionably the best music of any generation. So, after 50 years, whatever happened to the class of 68? Seems like yesterday But it was long ago We were running against the wind we were young and strong, we were running against the wind. Some of the classmates got married to their high school sweethearts and still married today. There may be more, but here's a few of the couples I know about. Paula Arnold and Jim Autry, the Autrys, Beverly Ann Neal and Pat Moran, the Morans, Joanne Perrell and Norman Dula, the Dulas, Jan Wilson and George Grubbs, the Grubbs. Galen Hutchinson and Leonard Hooks, the Hooks, Susan Clayton and Tom, the Herrings. Roughly 13% have died. A classmate and friend of mine we almost lost was Mike Fick. Mike inspires others with his amazing attitude. I interviewed Mike on my blog at johnbutlersbuzz.com. The faithful Thanksgiving Day Massacre, as they call it. You know, every year I did uh, Christmas decoration. I put lights up every angle, gutters, everywhere. It was like a light show, you know. And, and Angie saw me outside the window and saw the ladder up here about too much of an angle. And she says, oh my God, something's going to happen. She ran upstairs to get my son. And by the time she came back, I was on the ground. And what happened is the when I got off that ladder, because it was so perpendicular, it fell. And when it fell, I jumped. And when I jumped, John, I hit the ground so perfectly, both my seven and eight vertebrae exploded. And uh, broke, one, broke my ribs. I said, you're married to a paraplegic, honey. Says, After I got in rehab, that rehab, I thought I saw how hard it was gonna come back. And 
with my wife there every day. You know, she came in and she was laughing with me. She made things kind of different and serious. She, she, was, she just kind of turned everything into a, to a, a more agreeable area. And uh, I just started looking forward to getting up and going to rehab and change my life because I was determined I was going to come back and do this. And I never really wanted to to accept the fact that I'm, you know, in a wheelchair and can't do things that other people do. And that's why I started driving as soon as I could and tried to get back to work. I got back to work six months after my accident. And then you, you bike on a regular basis? Oh, yeah, I have a hand cycle. I do 15 miles every other day and, and uh, yeah, get my exercise. And just stuff happens, you know, you just yeah. deal with it. Yeah. Deal with it. All the stuff you think you can't handle, yeah. you can handle. That's, people can handle a lot more than they think they can. I decided to call a few people from the class of 68 at random. In the 60s, I, I would have used this device. Today, I'm calling via Skype on my computer. How oh, fun! You are so nice to do this. Thank you. I don't, how do I move the camera? I don't know Listen, where the camera is. Okay, it's on the, are, is okay, it a desktop? Yeah. It's probably at the top. Is it a Mac or a PC? Intel. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> this is terrible. No, 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 no. Okay, it's probably right at the top of the computer screen. This is a box. No, no. At, at the very top. Okay, there's a red dot by it. Probably right in the middle. Yeah, right there. Right where you're looking. <laughs> That's there. it. <laughs> you should have seen my kids trying to teach me how to do a computer. <laughs> well... I, I, I totally get it. You might be too far away, though. Is he too no, far away? That's not bad. No, that's not bad. This still doesn't work. Well, if it was farther back, it would work. Because you don't look like you're a monster. No, I don't think I need to be about his size. Hey, yeah, it's just not going to work out here. So I we're going. It's, it's close. It's close. <laughs> I know. Well, here we are. Here we are. Yeah. What, what's, what's your best memory from high school? I think my best memory yeah. is when I think about classmates. And I kind of reflected back on different people that, that we went to school with. And it's like every time I think about them, there'd be some occurrence <laughs> or some interaction that we had that would come back that was really like, wow. I hadn't thought about that in a long time. Yeah, and that—that's probably what I would what I would say. So the people. Yeah, the people are yeah. our, our classmates. And yeah, we, we had some good ones. Absolutely, we really did. Yeah, and uh, we also had some great families, some great parents. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah. Well, yeah. well, what would you uh, tell the young Randy today? Oh. The young Randy stepping off the graduation stage fifty years ago. What would yeah. you tell young Randy, knowing uh, what you know now? I think I would probably tell him, you know, you just finished what will be one of the best seasons of your life. And don't forget it. Yeah. Um, you've been equipped. You got a good foundation. You got a good education. You learned a lot of things uh, about how to live. You can go do what you want to go do. You know, you created great friendships and you had some wonderful relationships during that season. Yeah. Don't lose all of those. Tell me about what you're doing now. Semi retired for 17, 18 years. Oh, I really? My company yeah. back in the early 2000s. And uh, currently, I spend most of my time uh, involved in the. Uh, the Gideon Ministry, you, you know, the Gideon Ministry is just a group of professional business and professional men all over the world. And we got we have one thing that we do. We put the Bible in the traffic lanes of life. Five years I traveled to India and four years I traveled to the Philippines. And my task was to go over and work with the Gideons in those countries. Appreciate it, Randy. Look okay. forward to catching up with you. All right. Sounds good. Take care. Bye bye. Okay. Okay, this is my son, Xander, Alexander Porter Bennett Strong. He's 17. 
and a pain in the ass. No. <laughs> <laughs> okay, goodbye. So that's required to 70. And he's graduating? Next year. Next year, he's okay. He's in the 11th grade now. Okay. So, Randy, we're going to flash back to about where we were at Xander's age 50 years ago. Yeah, unbelievable. What's your best memory uh, from high school? First of all, I just want to say, how can it be our 50th reunion if I'm only 40? <laughs> I don't know, man. I, I don't know. They sent me the invitation. There was, there was a five and there was an O in there. <laughs> right? Yeah. Gosh, a memory from high school, you know, I don't remember much from that far back, honestly. Yeah, yeah. Um, but I do remember things like the parking lot, you know? Yeah. Just being in that parking lot, um, being in the hallways, the lockers. Yeah. Um, and, of course, Jane Martin and I were really close friends. I have a lot of funny memories of she and Betty Rose McNamara. Oh, my God, Betty Rose. Well, of course, she's no longer with us. Right. She I know. very sadly passed many years ago. Way too young. Um, this is not a high school story, but in the fourth grade, I had a huge crush on Betty Rose for years. Yeah. And um, she, we were doing a Swiss dance. She had just been to Switzerland for the talent show, Swiss yeah. Dance. And she got mad at me because I didn't know the steps as well as she thought I should. So after <laughs> school one day, it had just rained. This was in front of Dean Highland Elementary. Yeah. I'm on my bike. I have on this, you know, Ivy League cap. Remember those? Yeah. And Betty Rose comes up and out of the blue just slaps me so hard and oh. says, you need to learn your steps. <laughs> and she slapped me so hard that I fell off my bike. And she and Jane thought that was the funniest thing ever. <laughs> mean Girls. There's a movie about that. So where are you now? Now, um, I live in Puerto Vallarta, Mexico. Um, we moved down here in July of uh, last summer. Um, we lived in L.A. for 25 years. We've lived in Santa Fe for over 20 years. Yeah. And, you know, we just decided to move on. How often does your dream come along in life? Here we are. Yeah. What are we waiting for? Life's too short, you know? And so we did it. And you're enjoying it. We love it. Yeah. Just love it. Hey, take care. Good to talk to you. Good to talk to you, John. Thanks a lot. Take care. Hey. There you are. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Jana, we made connection. <laughs> Great. Through cyberspace. Uh, tell me what you're doing now. Well, I am teaching school. And I guess it's about my... 25th year. Wow. But my talent is, I'm, I'm good teaching kids. <laughs> well, what I did was I taught first, then I had the 10 kids. Then when the last one was in junior high, that's when I went back to teaching. Yeah. I, I mean, we must have a bad connection. I thought you said you had 10 kids. You know that. I know, I know, I know. I just, you know, you, you are amazing. You are absolutely amazing. You know, two of them just got their uh, PhDs last week. One got their law degree last weekend, and one got her his ed doctorate in education. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. First four doctors. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. Yeah. Yeah. Proud of them. They work hard. Well, what's the secret to raising children? Well, you know what? It was a concentrated effort on my part. I taught them everything they needed to know the year before they needed to know it. Wow. About life and about school and everything. I I, I was very hands-on. Yeah. And I loved it. I loved it. I loved every minute of it. Yeah. It was right down my alley. And you did this as a single mom? Yes, the last 20 years. Wow. Unbelievable. So. I'm kind of twiddling my thumbs now because I was so busy during that time. Yeah. Work going to soccer games and volleyball games and basketball games and all that stuff. Like, I, I have no clue. How you, I mean, I did, the, I did the Mr. Mom and Mr. Dad thing after my wife died a good while. And so, but I had two, and that almost killed me. I don't know how you did it with 10. Okay, tell me, tell me what your, uh, your favorite memory was from high school. Oh, okay. Well, that was the 
the senior rec day. I just love that day. For some reason. I think I must have been on the committee because we planned a song and sang it. I can remember. And we had a little, we dressed alike. And yeah. it was, and we, I don't know. It was just a really fun time. I, I really remember that. Yeah, yeah. Okay, what, what advice would you give young Jana uh, walking off the stage in 1968, looking back, knowing all you know now, what advice would you give young Jana stepping off that stage? I would tell her to have more confidence in herself <laughs> <laughs> and to um, stand up for herself, you know? Yeah. Just, I think we should enjoy every day we have. I love Ellen saying, come to this reunion. You might not make it to the next one. Yeah. <laughs> that, that committee has been, I want to thank them for all that they've done. They've done a fabulous job, you know, getting everybody you know, noticed and planning everything. I just thank them tremendously. And I'm really excited about it. They, they've been amazing. We need to give them a, a round of applause. <laughs> it's a lot, lot of work. Thank you for doing this also. That's really nice. I'd love to find out the story of every single person. I guess that's what reunions are for. And this one is a big one. 50 years. Looking back, life was or seemed much simpler then. I thought I had the world figured out when I graduated. It took me a bit. And I realized I didn't. Here's to the greatest of the great, the class of 68. Oh, no.